Hello there, I'm Barry Robertson, this is Scarborough TV News and we're out and about at the spa in Scarborough for the sci-fi weekend. I've got the main man, the main organiser, Steve Dickinson. Steve, how many years has this been going? This is, uh, well, next year's our 10th year, wow. 10th anniversary, 10th birthday, but this is the 10th event, if you include the two lockdown online ones we did, it's actually the 10th event, which is crazy. I'm now with Amber Doig Thorne. Now, Amber, I'm going to say Winnie the Pooh, but it's not an all, it's not a normal and ordinary Winnie the Pooh, is it? It's no. something horrific. It's a bloodthirsty serial killer version of Winnie the Pooh. It's not what you're familiar with at all. It's not the small, cuddly bear that you enjoyed as a child. This is a very, very different version. I can't imagine Winnie the Pooh being a monster. I think that's the thing. A lot of people can't imagine it, and I think that's why this film's done so well, because it's something completely unique and originally obviously Winnie the Pooh is aimed at children and we've basically taken this childhood character and redefined him for an adult audience which is really exciting. Yeah so what do you play? So I play Alice so she's one of the lead characters in the film and she's one of the only human characters to successfully get revenge on either Pooh or Piglet so that was really exciting to play. Piglet? Piglet's in it? Yes Piglet's in it, Pooh's in it and there's a couple of other characters you'll recognize as well. Tigger? Maybe you have to watch and see. <laughs> wow, I'm showing me age now. I used to like Winnie the Pooh when I was a kid. Me too, I was obsessed. Yeah. So can you just tell me a little bit about the film? Yeah, of course. So the brief concept is that Christopher Robin grew up with Pooh and Piglet. He looked after them, you know, fed them, cared for them. And eventually he went away to university and he kind of abandoned them and they couldn't fend for themselves. So they became feral and bloodthirsty murderers. And that's basically where the film starts. And it's them on a murderous rampage. I play one of the girls in a group of friends who go to this cabin in the woods for a relaxing weekend away. But the woods that we go to are a hundred acre woods. So it's not relaxing because Pooh and Piglet are there on a murderous rampage and we get caught in the middle of it so there's two stories going on at the same time there's Christopher Robin kind of trying to rekindle his friendship with these characters and then there's the girls from university having a weekend away that have been kind of caught in the middle and does he really look like Winnie the Pooh he does yeah I just can't imagine <laughs> Winnie the Pooh being terrible well luckily he doesn't look like the Disney version because I think so we have an actor playing Winnie the Pooh who's like a six foot man so I think if we went down the Disney route and had him in a red crop top and no pants that would be a very different film so we have him in kind of a lumberjack shirt and dungarees and it's a very different vibe it is a Winnie the Pooh mask so he is instantly recognizable as that childhood character that we all know and love so Amber tell me again if I wanted to watch it how would yes. I go about it uh, so it's really exciting actually we've just had the film in cinemas worldwide including in the UK um, but it's just been released on Amazon Prime Video so if you search Winnie the Pooh blood and honey you'll be able to stream it today I'm now with Terry Malloy. Now, Terry, you are actually Davros. Yeah. So how was it playing such an iconic role? Uh, it was fascinating. I mean, I loved it um, because I'm very much more into audio than I am television or, or film. And when I first saw Davros and asked me to do it, I said, well, yeah, it's basically a, an audio performance behind a mask because you had to create that character with your voice. And uh, it was interesting how when I got the mask on, I realized that you had to move your mouth very decisively in order to make the mask move on the outside. You automatically got a, a rhythm to speaking, and then you bring down the tone of the voice and get a bit paranoid, which you would do inside the mask. <laughs> and Davros begins to appear and want to exterminate everyone. Now, Alex, you have written a book, a story. Yes, um, two now, in fact, with a third one on the way. Wow. Well, what's the first one about? Um, the first one is about um, a girl called Gabby, an 18-year-old from Yorkshire, who'd have guessed. And um, it is a story about her rather unorthodox, shall we say, haunted house story. Now, I was inspired a lot by, um, obviously, the passing of certain family members, um, the sort of thoughts on what happens after death and all that stuff, definitely in the mind. And um, I thought, well, everyone knows the standard ghost story. What can I do to um, make it different? And of course, during this um, time, a lot of um, family and friends, you know, they show your support. So I thought there's a lot of love in that kind of thing. So I thought, what if I combine a ghost story with a love story? So we have Gabby, our lead, and um, the titular character, Trem, is a sort of mysterious woman who's um, been summoning these ghosts. And um, the story kind of evolves around the world that Gabby knows and the world that Trem knows kind of coming together. That's, well, as you can see, I'm with the sixth Doctor Who, Colin Baker. Colin
what was it like being the doctor? It must have been marvellous. So being the doctor, all that did was ratchet up the enjoyment level a bit because it meant people liked you before you said a word yeah. because of the five guys who'd been before me. Do you miss playing the doctor on the telly? Because I know you do radio books, don't you, these audio books? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, uh, there's a company called Big Finish. I've done about 200 two-hour, fully dramatised uh, Doctor Who stories. So it's exactly the same as the telly, yeah. without the pictures. So uh, I am still playing the Doctor. Yeah. I'm doing another one next week. And my voice is close enough to what it was 40 years ago well, to, be able to, to be able to get away with it. Yeah. Well, what a great time we've had down here at the Scarborough Sci-Fi Exhibition 2023. Lots of great stars from stage and screen, lots of people dressed up as Daleks and Spider-Man and Superman and Batman and all that. What a great time. Just goes to show Scarborough's still got it. I'm Barry Robinson for Scarborough TV News.